This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. The 55th Super Bowl is this weekend, 55, and a game this big deserves a big prize, not just some trophy. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy sports partner of Super Bowl 55, has up to $55 million in total prizes up for grabs with their Super Bowl prediction pool. How's that for big? Well, all you have to do to get your share of these huge prizes is enter DraftKings free Super Bowl prediction challenge. Once you submit your picks, you will get a free instant prize up to $25,000. And if you have the most predictions correct, you could win the top prize of $1 million. Download the app now, enter the free prediction challenge, answer questions like, Cool score last and boom, get ready to make it rain. DraftKings has paid out over $7 billion to its players since 2012. So they know a thing or two about big paydays. Here's how it works. Download the DraftKings app right now and use promo code THPN, that's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network, to enter the free $55 million Super Bowl prediction challenge. Everyone, yes, everyone gets an instant prize up to $25,000 just for playing. So use promo code THPN now and enter the free $55 million Super Bowl challenge only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of Super Bowl 55. Terms, conditions, and eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Put in my teeth. I just had to eat a snack bar. You love me. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> you love just seeing my teeth like right up in front yeah. of the camera. Like what? Got good little chompers going on right there. I did the the braces. They they were worth it. <laughs> I never had braces. My mom saw a shark at the beach. What? Yes. What are you crazy? Mean? There in was the ocean. The- Yes, in the ocean, it was high tide, and the rock or the waves kept coming up to the rocks, and so there was like no sand; it was just water. So it was probably I don't know, maybe like two, I don't know, like a foot or two of water. I'd say so, and like the waves kept like coming in, crashing up, and then like it would come down. There's like a tiny bit of water, but my mom saw like this long, like black thing with a fin on it. Oh, <gasps> so she thinks it was like a like a little sand shark or something, which is probably pretty common, but. Was she afraid? No, because we were like, we had a lot of rocks between us and the thing. <laughs> I'm so, And then she tells me, I'm like, great, I'm obsessed with sharks. So I'm like sitting there like looking at like the water. And then I see a fin and I'm like, a freaking dolphin, come on. <laughs> I have to say it is difficult to tell the difference between a dolphin fin or a porpoise fin and a shark fin, in my opinion, yeah. when you're in the ocean. So. Or you're like looking and you're like, oh, is it, uh, is it going to kill me or is it going to save my life? <laughs> you see, I, I've never witnessed a uh, fin while being in the ocean because I'm terrified of the ocean. Unless like I'm looking at the ocean from afar. I'm cool, but I would love to see a shark. I love sharks. Well, welcome everybody. This is episode, let's guess, 47. Episode 47, I'm Ray Ray. And I'm Breezy. <laughs> <laughs> and this week we uh, brought on a returning guest uh, to actually do a, a more official interview with him, Curtis Gabriel. He is a hockey player and he was on many episodes ago. Uh, he's a big advocate for um, LGBTQ plus and um, 
an advocate for diversity and inclusion and all of that. So we had him on briefly to talk about that, uh, along with the founder of Pride Tape, which is a company that makes um, hockey tape that's rainbow printed as a way to support the LGBTQ plus community and the hockey world. And we were like, we got to bring Curtis back on to just talk hockey because we didn't get to talk hockey or his career or like anything um in that other interview so i think you'll really enjoy this conversation with him yeah and our i don't even think people know but our well i think we addressed it in our pre-episode for that episode but he was supposed to be on the entire episode and we were going to be able to get to certain things but i guess a car had hit like a light post outside of his apartment and knocked off all of their power and so he ought to, like he just got like cut off so he he felt bad he messaged us and he's like anytime you guys want me to come back happy to do so and so we jumped on that opportunity and it was like talking to an old friend again <laughs> it was just kind of pick right up where we left off with him and and got an update on you know his uh i guess i don't know that tryouts the right word but like his mm-hmm. tryout to to play for the San Jose Sharks. How fitting we were talking about sharks to start this episode. (laughs) Um, That he was there trying to make the cut for the NHL team. And he talks about that. And he tells us about like the quarantine life and, and practice and just sort of a day in the life now and what he's working towards. And he's a, he's an agitator on the ice. And so he tells us about that and his rules of engagement of chirping. I think you'll, you guys will all enjoy it. Yeah. And we were able to get all of this in, in a pretty short amount of time since he was on a time frame yeah. of getting ribs delivered. So we wanted to make sure he was going to get those, uh, healthy meals in that he needs so (laughs) oh yeah and he got a couple of phone calls some from some from hello rachel some from some from from some from friends (laughs) (laughs) um so you'll hear uh that phone call i i I left all that in the edit because i thought it was funny so that is funny but he didn't want to have them join us on the podcast because they were private guys but that's okay next time (laughs) <laughs> yes, totally fine. Um, but anyway, well, we do not have an unpopular hockey opinion, though the main thing we're going to talk about in our pre-show could fall under that category. It also definitely falls under the shut the front door category. Um, it does not fall under Breezy's Barbecue, <laughs> but um, we're going to go with it because I had a pretty strong reaction to this story. Um and I couldn't really place it, place why, but I'm going to exercise my thoughts and feelings right now here with you all listening, um, as well as Breezy. And I might not have like a firm opinion on it, but the NWHL, if you don't know what that is, that's the National Women's Hockey League. Uh, they decided to do a sort of condensed season in Lake Placid and the games are going on now. They're entering the second week. They did like a mini bubble out there. And uh, the CEO of Barstool Sports, Erica Nardini, she is a hockey player. She's a huge advocate for women's hockey. She talks about it all the time on her podcast um, and on her social media channels. Also, if you don't know, Barstool Sports is home to probably the number one most popular hockey podcast, Spin Chicklets. Um, and they are also advocates of women in the sport. They've had women on and are advocates of the women's side of the hockey game as well. So basically what happened was uh, Erica Nardini had two of the NWHL players on her podcast before the tournament. I have not listened to that episode, but either way they went on. And then like a day or two later when the tournament started, the NWHL came out and just said, we have no association with Barstool Sports. We don't support them. Our players went and basically did this on their own. They didn't ask permission, but as a league, we do not support Barstool Sports. (laughs) And Erica Nardini's argument is, hold on a second. 
I have been an advocate for this sport. I've been promoting it. I've been bringing more attention to this. I want to buy a team. I want to figure out how to make this sport popular. Like I support these girls. I support what you guys are doing. I'm watching the games. And now all of a sudden, because I'm run this company that has been deemed to be misogynist and um, they harass people online and they attack people online on Twitter that like, the league cannot support her or her support of the players. And my first thought was that old saying, all press is good press. Like women's hockey needs press. We need, they, they need exposure. They need to get people excited. They need characters. They need players to go on podcasts like Erica mm-hmm. Nardini's and show their personality so people can give a flying fuck about them and want to watch them play hockey and be like, oh, oh, they have a hockey. There's a whole hockey tournament and I can watch it for free on Twitch for two weeks and I can watch all this amazing hockey and see that girl who was so funny. Sign me up. I mean, that's kind of how this works. So I, I don't really understand that. I could understand why the league would be upset that they didn't maybe get permission, which they didn't. The players did not go to the league and say, can we get permission to go on this podcast and Mm -hmm. talk? Um, They didn't do that. So I could understand why the league would be a little upset Um, though. They're promoting them and Lord knows they need promotion because I'm sure a lot of you listening to me right now are like, I didn't even know there was a league. I didn't even know there was a tournament going on. What are you talking about? So I I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. And I know a lot of the other podcasts on Barstool are, can be controversial. We have free speech. We can listen to what we want to listen to. We can say what we want to say. And for them to like go, and, and I think it's also strange that they would go after a woman CEO of such a male dominated company. And like, she has grown that company and has advocated for women's hockey and just hockey in general. I just find it really strange and odd that they would take that approach and go on social media and put out some tweet that's like, we don't support Barstool. We have no affiliation. Instead of like getting her on the phone, which I don't think that happened, but to be like, hey, we want to work with you. We don't approve of X, Y, Z, but like, thank Mm -hmm. you for all that you're doing. How can we make this uh, a symbiotic relationship that we can um, feel okay with you running a company that, you know, has a bunch of other podcasts that say derogatory things about women, which I also don't really know that that still happens on any of the podcasts, but I only listen to Chicklets and Erica Nardini's, so... From what I know, I have not heard anything that's offensive to women. Yeah. Do you think it was more of like a power move? Like we don't, you know, support this because we're not affiliated with it as in of like, well, we don't make money off of Barstool. Like Barstool's trying to maybe make money off of us without giving us a kickback. Like why are they putting their logo on with our logo? I mean, it could be one of those things too. It's very strange what you were saying though, but immediately through my head, I'm like, well, maybe it's one of those things where it's like, well, they're saying they're not affiliated with it and they don't support it to get a deal with Barstool Mm, to then be like, well, if you are trying to use us, our platform to, to bring more awareness and whatnot, but you don't want to work directly with us because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors or like what relationships could have been broken in between. And it's like, because what if there was a conversation and it went, and it went dry And then two players come on and they're like, wait a second, it went Mm -hmm. dry. I mean, I obviously don't know, but it went dry. But now you're bringing on our players and trying to promote it and be like, oh, goody do like two shoes. But you won't put the funds towards trying to build a relationship. I don't know. Who knows? I understand. No, I see. I see both sides of it. Um, But I also... Like at the end of the day, it's been good for women's hockey and probably for the league regardless, because it was like, there was, I think even an article from ESPN. And when ESPN is writing a hockey article, especially women's hockey, it's got to be a big enough story that's going on. So it's not the best press, but on the other side of it, I was like, okay, Now let's take a look at the fact that there's the NWHL where these players get paid fucking nothing. 
they give up they've given up two weeks of life they don't get paid nearly anything worth to be doing this uh they have other jobs families and all this other stuff um so there's that and then you have the players the women's hockey's player association of all of the like sort of all-star players like Hillary Knight who are had took a stand and said we're not going to play in the NWHL because it's not you know there's not fair play and pay and practice time and and standards and all these things and they want they they want to have a, a certain level of of, of an experience and equality when it comes to playing. So I understand not wanting to support the NWHL um, as a whole, right? Like from that player's perspective, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's, you can't not support it because then if you don't, it folds and then you still don't fucking have women's hockey and you don't have a women's hockey league that people give a shit about. So it's like a tough thing, but all in all, I think I'm of the camp that all press is good press to bring more attention to the game. The girls are still playing. They're kicking ass. They're running a great tournament. And hopefully this will continue to, to grow the sport and attention around women's hockey. What do you think? Should we be supporting the NWHL? Yeah. And Why Erica not? Nardini. Can we support I think we both? Should be- I think we should be supporting both because both have a good thing going on. And I think everyone deserves some support here and there. And I think we should, both of them should be supported. But I just thought of when we were talking about this, Hmm. there's not like a women's league in any sport that's popular. Well, the WNBA, I would say. I mean, but no one really, really cares. No. But hockey could be that sport. I agree. Like, let's think about it, like, everybody who, like, ends up liking hockey, they're like, oh, yeah, it's pretty much the best. But, like, unless you're, like, a weird football fan. Sorry, right. weird football people. But there's not, like, a like a prominent women's league that's popular in the sports world other than WNBA. But no one really cares about that because, I mean, let's just be real. I think we should be supportive of both mm-hmm. because – everyone could use some support and it could turn into a good thing and no one should be pooping on anyone's dreams well i like the color green and if you don't agree with me (laughs) then you suck (laughs) that's literally what it is cancel breezy everybody on twitter go cancel her and tweet hate at her for not liking green meh like really hashtag yeah Come on, guys. Come on. That's ridiculous. Like, this is the world we live in, and this is how things get... If everyone would just be supportive or, like, of one another or, like, want to work with one another to, like, help each other out or whatever it is, the world would be such a better place. And I feel like it's not that hard to do. It's not. Like, just take your ego and your pride out of certain things. Like, just come on. Just work together. You probably will succeed if you're being helpful for someone else. Like, let's just be real. So, yep. Be a good person. Treat people like you want to be treated. So, exactly. That's... It costs zero dollars to be a decent human being. Um, side note hmm. uh, the Kings played Minnesota. Kevin Fiala, who's been on fire for the Minnesota Wild, mm-hmm. boards Matt Roy, gets suspended for three oh, games. Matt Roy so... goes out. So the Kings are down a defenseman, right? Then later on, Sean Walker takes a slap shot to the face. He did you see his after picture? That was insane. I mean, the dude's face is effed up. It's insane. And then they ha- now have this. There was so much blood coming out of this guy. It was uncomfortable to watch. Oh, Ooh. it was so bad and so the kings were down two defensemen and i'm sitting there like gosh the freaking wild are out of control they're just trying to take one down ding done ding done who's next that's insane his face is so bad his nose is his entire face and his nose normally does not look like that he's a good looking (laughs) guy and then you're looking at and i'm like oh what's going on with you i don't know man it he, literally looks... I he's don't. not playing, right? Like, he's out, right? Well, 
Or is he I mean, being he, a real they, hockey guy and he's like playing with that busted face with one eye that he can't even see? He on? probably will because I think it was just like he's got stitch. Out. He probably needs to have some surgery on his nose. I don't know how his because it like hit him right in here. But they played Thursday night, happened Thursday night, and their next game is on Tuesday. So like he's had like he has some time to heal. Like I'm assuming he's probably just going to wear a full like face shield or whatever. Um, whatever they call that. Well, did what does he normally wear? Does he have like a half visor? Yeah, just a half visor. So he's probably going to wear a full cage. But the but half visor made the puck still did that to his face? Yeah, it like I think the puck just ended up he took it from <gasps> Matt Dumba who has one of like the hardest shots in the NHL right now. I mean, that thing just went pink and it just went it like when it came, I think he well he was throwing his head up too to like try to like back away and it just went pink. My sound effects are great, I know. Ding, They're ding, so ding. good. <laughs> but really, it was like... <laughs> yeah. It was like whole oh, face yeah. just crumbled. And I was sitting there and I was like, is he bleeding? And my dad's like, uh, yeah, there was a freaking river of blood. And then I was like, holy crap, that hit him high. And so I'm sitting there watching it. Like, I replayed it. And he, like, stopped by the bench. And then Curtis McDermott, like looked scared and jumped over and like grabbed his face and I was like oh my god did his eye fall out like right. why did Curtis look like that but it looked like the trainer said like hey I need help and then like he jumped over to like help but it did not look there was it was a river of blood straight up river of blood this is why we love hockey right it was insane I feel <laughs> so bad for the guy but like it was insane and my mom comes around again did you say blood <laughs> Well, she so loves funny. blood or something? No, she loves a good hockey fight. Oh, good. Oh, but it wasn't oh, like, a, like that. It wasn't a fight, but she does like, she's like, oh, they're injured. Like, I want to see like what happened. Like, cause it's like, at the end of the day, you don't want anyone to be hurt. Like, you don't want to see anything like that. But at the same time, it's like, how many other like sports leagues can you watch where like they actively show like the play over and over again, the people getting hurt, the blood all over the ice. The face all jacked up. Like, it is so cool in, like, a not cool way. There we go. Our guest, Curtis Gabriel, tells us about his face getting all fucked up from a, uh, not from a puck, though. So you'll hear that yeah. story. But, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's a real hockey. Hockey injuries are real. <laughs> They're real. Yeah, he saw his little uh, cut on the face. Yeah. It was awesome. Good old hockey guy. This week's episode of the House of Hockey podcast is brought to you by... Looking to spice up your sex drive and your love life? Try Libido Drops for women. It's formulated to enrich your sexual response, arousal, and lubrication. Libido Drops are healthy and organic. Just add a few drops to water each day. Try Libido Drops with no risk, complete satisfaction guarantee, or your money back. Order your bottle of Libido Drops for women now at libidodrops.com. And we have a promo code for all of you House of Hockey podcast listeners. You will get 10% off your first order when you visit libidodrops.com. In the checkout, in the coupon code, enter HOCKEY10. That's Hockey 10 for 10% off your first order of Libido Drops. Go to libidodrops.com. Our podcast is proud to be on the Hockey Podcast Network, and the network is home to many other incredible podcasts, including this one. Oh, hi there. Pleased to meet you. My name is Tom Franklin, one half of the Blue Notes podcast and the Hockey Podcast Network. We've got that 2019 Stanley Cup power too sweet to be sour. And we're also your home for the best blues analysis. Yes, it's it's a it's a Bruin, but he, he's he's going to help the power play. And and that's what people need to understand. And, you know, they're going to look at it and say, oh, well, Justin Falk was supposed to help the power play as well. Tory Krug is legitimately going to help the power play. felt like Newport was ready to go into his offseason and use Petrangelo as an example and say, okay, we're going to play chicken here with with uh, with the COVID cap here. Someone 
is going to give Petrangelo his money. We also have great guests from here at home. St. Louis Post Dispatch, St. Louis Blues beat writer Jim Thomas, the organist for the St. Louis Blues, Jeremy Boyer, and around the world. Yo, Blues fans, it's Gerard, the Dutch Blues fan, all the way from the Netherlands. And no other podcast can say they have a Hawaiian hockey correspondent, but we do. Aloha! I'm Guy, the Hawaii Blues fan, and this is my Aloha Commentary. Plus, a little self-deprecating humor thrown in there. One of our new Blue Note Selkie level COVID mask, if I can turn it the right way there so I can properly sell it. I am, I, you know what? I am failing my Price is Right model audition right here. This is, this is terrible. He has opted for the uh, neck gator uh, version of this, and I'm still failing my Price is Right audition. Um, <laughs> voted the best podcast by our peers in the Hockey Podcast Network. Follow Tom and Wags on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Blue Notes Pod, and be sure to subscribe to Blue Notes wherever you get your podcasts from. This is Tom Franklin reminding you to not be a chump and always play to the whistle. We are going to throw it over to Curtis Gabriel, and you probably know him from playing with the New Jersey Devils the Minnesota Wild, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, which is the farm league for the Flyers. And he's currently playing under the San Jose Sharks organization. And he is a LGBTQ plus ally. And he's just an overall great guy. You should go check him out if you haven't already. And here is our interview with him. We hope you enjoy. Ribs and yeah, potatoes. I'm really excited for my night with my, with my food getting delivered. <laughs> you must be doing like a lot of food delivery right now, then, because that's all you can do. Like, what, what are you cooking? It's the only you thing I've eaten. So the, only, the only meal I haven't ordered off DoorDash has been one pregame meal uh, at camp we had that we did it as like a dress scrimmage. Okay. Who is is it calling? here already? Is the food <laughs> no, here already? It's, my, it's just my friend Hunter Warner. I used to play pro hockey with giving me a call. So. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to get him on the no, pod? No, absolutely not. No, he calls me all the time and I, he, we know we just answer him. We can't, he knows I'm busy. Now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, give us the update. What's going on? Where are you, Curtis? What's happening with your season? It's been, uh, probably a pretty emotional start for you starting out in San Jose and the whole sort of thing of the team and then being relocated to Arizona. So give us the, the rundown of sort of everything that has happened in a very short amount of time. Uh, well, we didn't know when the season was going to start. So I tried to be as ready as possible. And then I got a call probably on December 20th saying that was going to be pretty quick. So all of a sudden I was leaving. So I had to leave my girlfriend uh, which sucked, but, uh, you know, the pandemic's been not as bad to us, you know, as far as other people have gone through it a lot worse. So it actually gave us more time together. So we can't be too, can't be too, uh, big of complainers about that. So I got out of there quick, got down to Arizona the night of the 22nd, had to start a seven day quarantine, which was definitely new for me and being, you know, working hard to be in shape, to show up ready. And then just be stuck in your room for seven days was super interesting. Um, kept busy. I'm not a guy that gets bored easy. So I have so many things I could be doing. I usually don't have enough time. So that wasn't too bad. And I actually didn't feel too bad coming out of it. And the team was pretty, pretty good about not pushing us too hard. They kind of eased us in a little bit, which I think was safe guys would have got hurt. So, um, I felt really good at camp. I felt really comfortable. Um, my kind of mental mindset that shifted definitely aided me there. I wasn't as stressed out as normal. I was having fun if anything, which was pretty cool. Usually I'm never really having fun in a training camp. (laughs) <laughs> um, I thought I played well, just, uh, need to clean up some, a couple things and I would have had to play outstanding, I think to, to bust through and make it onto the, the opening night roster. And, um, they told me to, to get down and, uh, play some games in, in the AHL and especially in preseason, we have six or seven preseason games. So we have, I think three or four left, depending if they get canceled and, um, get ready to play. Uh, they play up there, Vegas, LA, Anaheim, or, uh, St. Louis, basically all of February and March, except for two games against Colorado. So they're going to be big, heavy games, yeah. back-to-back games. And that's obviously the role I play, as you can see with my face here. And um, <laughs> uh, definitely would have liked to get down here. If I could have chose, I would have gone down and played to get ready to get called up and not be just sitting down in the taxi squad. So it's worked out well. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that was going to be my next question. Like, would you have wanted to be on taxi squad or is it better to be playing, you know, like I mean, at, I, in games? I guess ideally, you know, if you made it to the taxi squad, you played better, I'm assuming. So I think, I think that would have been nice too, but uh, I'm just at the mindset I would have made anything work. Now it would have been nice to make the taxi squad and then say, would you rather be here? Go play. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. but, um, I'm just making the best out of everything. And um, I've had a great, I played the last two preseason games and scored like 30 seconds in and 15 seconds in in both games and playing like a, a good role and playing penalty kill, which I've really put some time into. So I'm having a lot of fun. Next question, your eye. So for people who aren't um, watching and fun fact, I was actually listening to that game, the audio, the the game that you played in where you scored and then got your face busted open shortly after. <laughs> so <laughs> you're off to a pretty good start. Do you want to tell us about that tilt you had on the ice? You had a couple uh, in the most recent game. What would have then been Friday, Friday? Yeah, the one that you listened to was uh, uh, the Wednesday, I believe. Friday actually was pretty quiet as far as the physical stuff, but uh, the game you listened to, yeah. yeah. I started the game, I was weird. I haven't uh, played a game, obviously, like a real kind of game like that, a preseason game in 10 months, and I think I broke my stick like the first 10 seconds, got a new stick from the bench, skated up the ice, and got a pocket scored, so that was weird. And then um, next shift, fought their big guy, Keegan Kanzig. He's like 6'7", 250, so he's even, you know, I'm a big guy, but he made me look small. And uh, yeah, it's happened a lot. Like, it's not like he like beat me up or anything that, you know, we were both standing and he just pushed the visor into my face. So I got it hopefully pushed off my helmet a little bit more. So it doesn't keep happening, but he just pushed it into my skin, which split it. It's really sharp uh, when you start talking about, you know, punches, like it doesn't have to be that hard. This whole side of my face has been cut up from visors. So just kind of unfortunate. Jeez. Well, visors are supposed to protect you, right? Not yeah. Not well, joking. honestly, <laughs> honestly I, it stopped me from getting pucks in the face a million times. So it's done more uh, good than, than harm, but it's just kind of frustrating when you get in a fight that like, if anybody's watching, you're thinking, Oh, they kind of just both just hit each other a little bit, nothing that too bad. But then I come out with a huge cut. So it's just kind of like, right. just kind of like annoying. And then to have them tell you, Oh, well, you, you beat me up. I'm like, come on. Like, do I, do I seem discouraged about you? I don't think I'm really discouraged. I think I'd do it again. That's so funny. Well, we heard from a past guest. I don't know if we should be talking about it because it's kind of like a fight club rule, I guess. Literally a fight club. Is there such thing as like you can't or you shouldn't be fighting someone bigger or smaller than you or like no, out of your weight class? Definitely not a rule about that. Just about how big of a heart you want to have and how big of a guy you want to go after. So. Um, I think the only kind of somewhat, there's no actual rules, but if you want to have some respect for each other, just um, don't punch each other when you're in a super compromising position. I mean, in my, in my opinion, if you're on one leg, you know, and, and unless you're, if you're getting back up, you're still eligible to get punched. If you don't want to be in the fight anymore, go down. But as soon as you go down, don't punch the guy anymore. And that's kind of what I try to do. Um, I've been there where I was going to swing at a guy and I saw him going down and I was like, oh, okay, hold back on it. So that's really the only <laughs> thing. But other than that, it's, you'll have guys that have no respect and just they're trying to be so mean to scare you. And then other guys are like much more nice about it. It kind of just depends right. on the situation. Makes sense. So what's kind of like your mental aspect of it when knowing like you're going to be on the ice and you could potentially be getting into a fight? Like, do you enjoy it? Is it something that like you get like almost like an adrenaline rush off of, or are you just like, Oh, I don't want to be this guy right now. Yeah. Um, that's where it's different, I guess. I was listening to Dustin Poirier talk before his fight with McGregor, and I, I can relate to it a lot. So the only difference is, is he's actually like, that is his actual job. Like, I'm a hockey player that will fight, right? So it's like a little separate. So when I'm not playing great, the team's not necessarily playing great, and hockey can be a very hard sport when it's going against you. That's when it kind of sucks more to fight. You kind of just say, screw it, and you don't really want to. But every time else, I, it definitely is a bit of a like a drug. Like, he talks about how it's like a weird thing where – he's in a fight and after the first round he's in so much pain already and his guy asks him how, how is he doing all right and he's like oh I freaking love it because there is something to the anticipation and the rush you get it's that fight or flight and you choose to fight so it's like it's a pretty crazy feeling so there definitely is a drug to that a little bit I definitely think after my career I'm gonna have to find something for that, for that kind of outlet but um I do I do like it probably more than most guys yeah I'll say that that's part of my reputation too I think that guys know that I kind of like it a bit. And those guys are usually, you know, I'd rather fight a guy that doesn't really like to do it. So that's for sure. You don't want guys that are, that like to do it. It's definitely tougher. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we just had a, a past guest, well, I guess his episode's going to be after yours, but 
he's kind of the same way. He's like, I don't know, after my hockey career, I feel like I need to find a career where I can like, just like fight someone at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm going to find that one, but at least something like join like an MMA gym, which I've already go to an MMA gym, but, or, or get into like something where there's like an insane amount of discomfort, because I think on the, like, and I have talked about before, like outside of your comfort zones where life begins, yeah. like, I don't think life's very fulfilling if you're comfortable. So I've been raised by a, you know, great family, middle class. I didn't really have too much. I mean, most people are going to think I had so much adversity. Yes. My dad took his own life, but everybody in every sort of family has something tough that happens. But other than that, my life's pretty comfortable. So I try to actively get uncomfortable. Yeah. Why was that important for you to share like publicly and, and you share a lot of your life and um, some of the big things that have happened to you, both positive and maybe possibly you could consider that negative. Um, but how important was it for you to really put that out there on like social media and in a public way? Oh, because it's, it's just, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I try not to swear a lot, but I do like, for example, swearing is a part of life. And I think it's pretty funny and can be used in a great way. There's can be a bad way to use it, but just like, I kind of relate that to there's bad stuff in life. And I think being open and honest and authentic about it is the most real way to get through to people. I'm not hiding about it. I've kind of in stages rolled out my story. I you know the first time I talked about it, I probably wasn't so, you know, into the details, but now a couple of times now I'm getting to more of the details and stuff. I even found out not too long ago that he did reach out for help and wasn't able to get to that week later appointment. He just couldn't make it till that. So that just shows like I have a direct correlation. I'm, I fight for all these issues that I'm not a part of, you know, I'm not a person of color. I'm not uh, in the LGBT community, but I can definitely talk to mental health and that touches every single person on this planet. So I feel like going forward in my life, that'll probably be where I hang my hat on. I just kind of fell into the LGBT stuff and the, and the black lives matter stuff, but that's definitely where I'm going to hang my hat. And I think being that authentic, And that real is what's going to hit home with people that I understand that life's not all sunshine and rainbows, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Exactly. And you've obviously been a super big inspiration to so many people by, you know, everything. Who's calling you now? Is it your food? (laughs) I don't know how to turn off. It's on my computer. So people FaceTime me. (laughs) Now it's Nathan Bastion on the devils. He probably saw my picture I just posted. He wants to talk about it. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn this off. So it's, it's okay. It's I think good. you should just answer the next call and oh, put God. them on speaker. Come on. No, they would be not fun. be happy about that. Those two guys would not be happy about that. <laughs> private guys. But uh, no, go back to your question. Go ahead, Breezy. No, I was just going to say you're, you're a huge inspiration for, you know, standing up for people and you've had a great response. Can you maybe it's more locker room talk, but what kind of response have you got from your peers and your player and your teammates and whatnot for being the change and being able to, to stick up for people who don't have as big of a voice as you do? Not much, to be honest. Um, the most I hear from are, you know, older buddies that I've known for a long time, probably more comfortable talking about it with me, um, past teammates that I've talked about a little bit more, but uh, currently on this team, uh, not much. Nobody's really mentioned it about it, but also you got to remember we've been quarantined, right? Like we're not supposed to be hanging out. You saw what happened to the Capitals and yeah. not only do I not want to get in trouble, so I don't try I'm not trying to hang out with the guys as much. I also don't want to get COVID because I'm trying to get up to the NHL. I can't risk that. And I'm quite happy sitting in my room. I'd love to hang out with the guys, but we just can't. So maybe if we had been able to have team events and go out or whatever, like a normal team, we would have talked about it, but so far uh, not too much. So uh, it just goes to show the insular nation, nature of the sport. And um, I don't know why guys are scared about it on this on this team or organization, just because we're the most open probably organization there is in the NHL. Mm-hmm. But uh, maybe it's just they, they agree and they don't see a point in uh, talking to me about it. Kind of got it covered. I don't know, but uh, uh, not too much. Do you plan on wearing um, the pride tape in any of the games or forgive me if you already have and I haven't seen it? Yeah. Yeah. I wear, I've, I've worn it on every, you know, I've had it on my stick every time I've picked up a hockey stick since February of 2019. So, so yeah. all the like preseason games and everything like that. I stick handle in the parking lot and people walk by, I have it on. I think that's awesome. And, and do you get any sort of like positive reactions as well? Okay. So the players don't really acknowledge it at, at this point with, with where you're at, but um, are you getting any more, um, like people who are in the sport, you know, talking to you about it and, and continuing to message you saying like, thank you for doing that. Like, that's awesome. Or well, yeah, it's, it's, it's an endless, um, especially since my skates, I did my skates. Like I still have 99 plus DMS and I try to knock off a couple of days, but then they get refilled by some other story I make. So I have 
some that go back to that time I still need to get to. But yeah, the people uh, through my Instagram and social media are, are amazing. Um, I think they were really what drive me forward and know that I know I'm doing a good job from them and uh, really fuels my fire. If they're, if they're receiving me and the way I'm putting out, whether it is activism, whether it is my brand, whether it is motivation, all that kind of stuff, if, they're, if I'm getting that feedback and it's exactly what I want it to come off as, that's really great to me. And what's funny is it usually comes off to only the people that are seem to be secure, somewhat individuals, mm -hmm. the people, you know, who come back with the hate and all that stuff. Those are the people that don't really have their stuff kind of buttoned down and I feel bad for them, but uh, I guess they just don't know me well enough. And I guess you have to follow me long enough to realize I'm not doing this. Or I'm going out of my way to do this. If I could, I'd just be talking about hockey and mental health and my own stuff. But uh, I, I see a need of, and I hear a need from people in the community that I need to do this stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's very much needed from what we've just seen over the last year across like society as a whole um, and, and just so much, so much differences. And then it really makes you look at the things around you in your life. Like if you're a hockey fan and, and what's going on in the hockey community, if you're play and, and to really take a closer look and go, oh yeah, there really isn't this, or we need more of that. So I think it's, it's really courageous to be the person who is willing to do that, especially in a, a hockey culture that's always been very um, about the team and quiet and we don't address like big life issues. That's not what we're about, you know, kind of thing. So like, what would you like to see long term in the in let's just say within the NHL and the AHL, like as far as diversity and inclusion goes, like what do you want that to look like? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's funny, like people in life, you know, people that hold management positions and high up positions in big organizations, they're from an older time and they're conditioned to think a certain way that sometimes it's not their fault. What's their fault is not, getting educated and taking the time to learn about it and catch up. If you're, you know, people who usually rise to the top of things know that you have to adapt to survive. So mm -hmm. you should probably adapt to the social climate that's going on now. So unfortunately it might have to take them moving on and retiring and not being involved in the sport for your younger people coming up that have been closer to this kind of movement start taking over. So ideally the younger kids that we're focusing on, now that are getting educated more and more just through social media and looking at my profile, looking at Brock McGillis's profile that are learning that way uh, are going to start moving forward and take up these positions and be successful and make the change. You know, can only do so much, but we're trying. We've got a, a really cool initiative coming hopefully sometime soon when we put it all together. It's not ready yet, but that'll be a big thing for um, LGBT and hockey and, and inclusion in hockey. But uh, I would like it to see, I'd like to see where it just doesn't matter. It just really, because it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. And I just posted in my picture. I just posted a picture of me, had a, had a goal. And I said, hop on the Gaber train. I said, you're welcome to come along if you, you know, you treat people with respect. And after that, you don't give a damn and stay out of everybody else's business. Because that's really what it is at the end of the day. Why do people, so many people care about how other people live their lives? It blows my mind. It's so selfish and arrogant to to think that you should have a say in how other people live their lives when they're just perfectly good people so i'd like it to get to the point where it doesn't matter hey you come to the locker room hey we'll get to know each other of course over over the season you might get to know hey that guy's gay okay cool i'll be the guy that's like hey so who are we going after guys for you tonight or something you know what i mean i want it to be where it just is just normal because it is mm -hmm. oh yeah i know i think a lot of that is so many people's own fears and insecurities is the like um, attack on other people and judgment and criticism is, you know, just the fear of want, not wanting to face their own issues. It doesn't necessarily have to be that they are, you know, gay or not or whatever it is, but, you know, usually it's a symptom of, of, of their own issues. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's hard to deal with though. And you're brave to like put that out there regardless and have to see all that i mean even when you're going if you're going to delete those messages like you still are reading it and consuming that so thank you so. yeah I, I like doing that i like connecting right like i don't have as much i have as much left left uh, as less patience with like creating content as much i like connecting with people so i'm trying to get like i work with a company that'll help me put out content because i like messaging people i like the, the actual interaction um but yeah no i 
I used to be someone who didn't know anything about these issues, right? And when I when I got confronted by them, I didn't start spewing why it's bad. You know, I was just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Let me kind of process this. So that's okay if you don't know yeah. what to do, but actually maybe process it. Don't do it right this second, but maybe set a little thing to work on something, get uncomfortable to learn something. I don't know, but uh, everybody doesn't really know, but you have to learn, but don't react with, we have such as humans, the unknown is so scary, you know? Like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm freaked out by the ocean. That's an unknown to me. I don't want to go like <laughs> snorkeling or anything right now. I'm freaked out. When I was a kid, I did. But now I know there's some serious, scary stuff out there. But I could push through that if I wanted to go do that again. People are just like, ah, racism, ah, LGBTQ. And that's white fragility, like all these things I'm learning about. And it's it's sad because it's most of the time not people's fault. It's just the way we've brought, been brought up. I, I wish I went to school and there was a social justice class every year it should be mandatory. I don't know. Like it just should be what's more important to society, putting somebody in the workplace or putting a good person out there. Why don't we just work that right in right away? That's something I yeah, want to see. Definitely. Happen. I agree with that for sure. Well, let's take it back to you uh, talking about connecting with people. And I'm really curious about what your story is behind sharing your daily routine on your IG stories. I think it's something that's super cool. I get inspired by it every day. I'm like, Oh, I got to log on and see what he's doing. <laughs> Thank you. So, Hey, see, so you telling me that is just what I'm talking about is that feedback from people saying, Hey, they like what I'm doing. And, and that's awesome to me because I'm doing like the bare minimum in my mind. Right. Like I just, I'm doing it so authentically, just so just like, Oh, I see something people, well, I think I used to be a fan of, you know, a kid of NHL hockey players. I still am. I would love to see what guys are doing. So I just think, Oh, this might be I do a little checklist. This might be something people might like. Will I get in trouble for it? Yes or no. If no, post it. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And um, yeah, people seem to be really like it. And why not? Like there's not many, you know, if players do it. It's like one time thing. It's not a consistent daily basis thing, right? Like PK Subban's doing it. And then I'm way down here doing it as like a not as star player. But uh, it's almost like I'm more relatable because I'm just I'm just a tall dude that liked hockey. And I fought my way and grinded my way and worked out my way to get to this point. I think a lot of people relate to that. And I am, I'm very chill. I come off as just like another fan that plays the game myself. And um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really am. And some guys don't really like it. That's just, it's kind of funny. And uh, cause it's unknown to them and it's so cool. I'm into myself. It's like, am I really that into myself or am I just growing? Like what I like to do? Like, that's the part of it. Like it's like hockey's all about the team if you're not putting every second of the day into the team you're a bad teammate it's like no that's just not true that's just not true yeah. so I'm growing my personal brand because I want to have as many opportunities when I'm done playing I want to be able to walk away and be like you know what my body kind of hurts I'm 33 I kind of want to do something else and I want to <laughs> feel confident about that and I've some only things lined up and so many people sending me messages hey come work for us come do this I want to have a lot of opportunities so this is my way that I can do it right now and uh, having so much fun with it so you just say that is really cool yeah. And I think a lot of people are like that too, because from what I'm getting is people want to be kind of in the mindset of, of their peers and their favorite hockey players. And for someone to take the time like you do to kind of break it down for them to say like, oh, well, this is what it takes to be, you know, at a pro level and whatnot. I think it really opens up their minds. And um, so good job. I think it's cool. Thank you very much. And there's times that, you know, you look silly and stupid on it. And I think that's what's funny, too. It keeps me humble. Like the other day, I, I'm still not used to the time change. And I'm talking about the MMA fights and all that stuff. And people are like, you idiot. It's two hours difference. You can stay up. And all. Anyway, it just it's fun. It shows that like, I'm just a normal dude. Like hockey players aren't like super smart and super like robotic and we're aggressive and all the time. Like, I'm just a dude. I like yeah. a lot of other things. I play pro hockey and I love it, but it's just such a it's so easy to relate when you just be yourself. And people are like, why'd you post that? I had one, one buddy be like. This is the most simp story I've ever heard. Like, congrats, man, for really sharing how you messed up with an MM. Like, you know, and I, I, I laughed and I'm like, you know, it's true, but it also shows people my personality. Like, I am a big goof. Like, I make mistakes all day. And then I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like, it's not a big deal. So that's what people want to see. I want to see Crosby do that. It's not his personality. I want to see Bex right. do that. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. it gives permission to the people watching to feel okay about the things that they fuck up in their life or mistakes exactly. they make, you know, exactly. like, and to show that like you're human, um, you know, you have a different role though. Like you are, you know, an entertainer or a role model. I mean, like, how do you perceive yourself then? Like, because I mean, you, you are a hockey player that performs in front of normally in front of audiences and and you're an athlete and that carries its own sort of weight yeah so it's kind of funny like when I was 
at a really tough time in my career, which people wouldn't think. I was actually uh, having an awful time in Binghamton when I was in New Jersey. I played the first half of the season there, and I was getting called up, and I had, wasn't even playing. I was, I was getting scratched in the minors and getting called up to the NHL because I was just like that tough presence, and I was in an awful place. I just didn't like it at the time. So I was up there, and I remember I was at, I was at the morning skate in Toronto, and I knew I, as soon as I get off the ice, I was getting sent down. So I knew that. So I was going to stay out on that ice as long as I could until they came and grabbed me. So me and Ken Danico are out there, and he's the former legendary Devils player and, and color commentator, and I just was out there, you know, talking with him and passing the puck around and just soaking it in. This is, you know, Toronto where I grew up. This is the Leafs ring. And I got off, and I was walking down the tunnel to go to the room, like, oh, here you go, time to get cut. And I walked by someone and I realized there was someone sitting in the stands and I went, I know his face from somewhere. And I went, oh, screw it. What do I have to lose? And I backed up and I was like, where do I know you from? He's like, I'm Jay Harrison. I run the NHL core development program, which is what I, I saw him present at the rookie orientation so many years ago, talking about life after hockey and preparing for it. So I back up and I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah, dude, I need some help, man. Like I'm getting sent down right now. Hockey's not fun right now. Like let's, Let's get into something. And I also had to beg him because uh, you're usually supposed to have a certain amount of games to access this program. You have to play like 38 calendar games in a year. And I'd only played like 20 or something. I was like, dude, just please help me out. He's like, dude, we're not having anybody ask us to come work with us. If you're begging to get in, you're in. And I worked with him and them and I did all these tests. And it was like the two jobs that I would feel fulfilled in doing are management or entertainment TV kind of stuff. So I immediately kind of jumped into that. I was actually going to go talk on NHL network at the end of the season before I went home, but I got a concussion. So I was like, probably don't go on the TV when you got a concussion. (laughs) Um, But that really set in my mind that, yeah, I'm a people person. I like working with people. I've always had like, I've never been in, uh, you know, my role doesn't lend itself to being assistant captain, captain, but I've always been like my own leader in a way. Um, But uh, I, and I like entertaining. I like talking and having fun and and being on screen. So it's kind of morphed into this. Um, which is interesting. So I have a ton of fun with it and it, it makes sense to me because that's what my personality kind of backs up and it, it's proven to be proven to be right. Definitely. I definitely think you're a, a people person. I think a lot of people have a lot, a lot of respect for you um, and they're very, you know, you're very relatable. And so with that being said, uh, I actually asked a, uh, a question on our IG story yesterday and if they could ask a pro player any questions, there's four questions that came in. Can we ask you them? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Cool. So someone wants to know what your pregame meal is. Yeah, I'm, I do most of my stuff based on what I think just enables me to play the best, you know, so I, I'm, I'm a big like, I've always tried to eat pretty much glute well since doing my nutritionist thing, like gluten free, and I try to eat no dairy, no eggs, which is hard. So I, I'm really just like a chicken, quinoa or rice vegetable guy, just really clean, eat a ton of it at like maybe four, five, six hours before the game and then have like a snack a bit before the game and snack during the game. So it's usually that kind of meal. What do you usually snack on mid game? Whatever they have in the, in a, <laughs> the NHL teams obviously have a lot more, but um, we like, actually, are we talking like nachos from the stands and no, like soft pretzels no. or <laughs> what? Chicken and rice before the game. What do you think of eating nachos? <laughs> Just a giant ball of grease in my stomach. You said whatever they have. No, but whatever they have is like in the, in the locker room, we have like applesauce, we got like you know different protein bars and, and little, right. like, sugar, sugar chews that like give you a little jump of energy um you know bio steel that kind of stuff just like little things to keep you kind of have something digesting but it doesn't make you feel full and heavy the worst is like to, as a hockey player is like to still feel like you're digesting a lot of food you want to be light and good yeah you probably don't want to get a stomach ache on the ice either mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man so what's your favorite pump up jams to listen to before the game yeah. Uh, I'm pretty good. I like a lot of genres of music, but if I have to probably get really pumped, it definitely have to be like EDM. I think like, I really like Hardwell, really like, um, like big kind of big room DJs like that really loud in my headphones. That's probably the last thing I'll listen to sometimes a little like rock ACDC, something like that, but usually EDM. Nice. A lot of people say that uh, locker room music sucks. Would you say that's true? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I run it. I've run it before for quite a while on some teams. When I was in Minnesota, I even made the on ice locker room. I mixed it together. They oh. sent me a couple songs, and I picked got to pick a couple because I did it, and I got to put the last one on. So I've always thought that was pretty cool that I got to <laughs> DJ a little bit of that, and I got to be on the ice. You know, in Minnesota, all the fans come down too, so it's like packed, and I would stay yeah. on last to hear the song that I put at the end that I got to pick because all the other ones they picked. 
and I would yeah. just jam out to my song that I picked that I put on the speakers. I thought that was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Not not a lot of people can say that. <laughs> so I think it's neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so uh, what do you do on your free time that's not hockey related? I mean, I try to, that's the thing where I'm trying to balance like not answering too many people because I kind of have that problem right now. Probably I'm kind of like having a lot of fun with that when I probably should like chill out. I don't need to answer like 40 people a day and start having conversations with them. You know what I mean? Like some days wow. it's that many, right. But, but yeah. I need to like, basically what I do in my free time is I'm, I have time segments. I got to eat every three hours, a big meal, usually three or four hours. So in that I fill the space with either FaceTime with my girlfriend, FaceTime with my mom, you know, the odd friend here and there, or my brother who's vacationing all over the world right now, psycho. And, uh, or, and then doing, answering people, figuring out like what kind of stuff to post. Um, I'll either go, I could go stick handle and then just, you know, trying to pick up pieces here and there of social justice stuff to learn. I have my book that I'm reading the me and white supremacy. So I'm just never bored. I always, I wish I could just pause the night sometimes and just add like five hours and do something. Cause I just really like being busy and doing stuff. I think I just, I like to be productive. Good quality to have for sure. And uh, last fan question is, does your number have any significance to you? Um, so I, yeah, kind of, I, uh, growing up, I was always number 20. I was born on the 20th. So I always like that number. Um, and then I always like nine, but I'm not the type of player that can wear nine. So I was like, okay, I know that no, I'm not going to just wear nine or ask for it. So when I got to junior, they had 29 available. So I was like, Hmm, 20 and the nine, we could go with that. I wore that for four years. And I will say I wore that before it became like a big skill guy number. So I know now it looks like I'm wearing like McKinnon or dry saddles number or all these guys, whoever, I think there's other guys now that are wearing it, but Nope. I wore it before that was a thing. So I can still confidently rep that. And Ryan Klo wore it with the, with the San Jose Sharks. who was a guy that I, I try to play like I'm never going to be as skilled probably as him, but he's super tough and well-respected guy. All right. Now we want to know uh, a good story, fun story. It can be rookie party. It can be getting locked out of a hotel room, missing a bus, <laughs> uh, playing a prank, Whatever you feel comfortable sharing, um, mm-hmm. that's not going to piss off any of your friends or teammates. Mm-hmm. I've shared this one before, so I'm just going to go with it. And I feel like the guy wouldn't care if I did share it too. That's why I've shared it. So um, <laughs> I don't think I've told you. You probably it's I, I do a lot of pod, some podcasts that people are not going to listen to, so I can kind of share these stories around. You know what I mean? Because yeah. um, I do a lot of I like to do podcasts with guys that just start them. I think that's really cool because you get like their first guest and they're all excited for it. I like talking to people like that. So I share these kind of stories and then I kind of test it out to see if anybody notices and gets back and gets mad at me. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, so I was in Minnesota for my first NHL training camp and I just had met my good buddy, Tyler Graveback. We're roommates and we're going to camp the first day and we're on the ice and, um, uh, Mike Gill's the coach and I'm in, you know, two practice groups and I don't know anybody. I'm like, Holy crap. First, first thing we're doing, he blows whistle. He's like, everybody pair up. I'm like, look, around. And I'm, my standing's Danny Healy. And I'm like, Danny friggin' Healy. Like, this guy's like a legendary hockey player. He's a big goofball. And uh, he kind of goes, let's go, kid. So the drill is to protect the puck against each other, whatever. And uh, we're protecting the puck. And he's beating me. He's a big, strong guy. I'm like, you know, young guy. And so that was my first introduction to him. I'm like, okay. So I guess he kind of knows us now. So he kind of started talking to us a little bit, you know, me, me and my buddy throughout camp. And uh, one day we're, I just had heard all these like stories about him. He's kind of like a different guy. So we're working out and everybody's busting their butt in the workout room. You know, the co- captain Coy was working out, everybody's working out. And he just kind of walks around the corner, like naked with like his bag over his shoulder. And he's just like, like workouts. Like he's kind of just like, you know, he's got, a, he's had a lot of injuries. You know, he probably doesn't work out much. His shoulders like poking out. He's had a shoulder surgery. So he's just like goes to the hot tub and I'm like, all right, I guess heater doesn't work out. And then, um, the other day, the next day, I think we and my buddy Ty were leaving the rank and we were in the, the, the minor league room. So we're not in the big room. So we, we come out a different locker room and we're walking. He happens to come out of the NHL room at the same time. So now we're walking towards like where we go to the hotel and he gets in his car. So we're walking and he's like, what are you guys doing the rest of the day? We're like, Oh, we're pretty tired. Probably just get some food and relax. He's like, we're not like, you're not going out doing anything, you know, drinking a little bit. I'm like, no, probably not. We're like, no, probably not. He's like, Oh, well, you know, you got any like, got any girls, got any girls, you know, talking to anybody around here. And I'm like, no, we just got here. We're just tired. And first NHL camp, we're kind of like, you know, he's like, Oh, well, you guys are a lot of fun kind of, and like kind of walked to his car. And then the next day 
I can't remember where it was on the ice of the room. He's just like, we kind of walked by and he's kind of like, Hey boys, these guys don't like drinking or girls. I don't know what they're like. Freaking just like, just kind of chirped us. And I was always just like, Jesus, like, man, like, <laughs> so it was just kind of like funny. Like Danny Healy is that kind of like goofy, like hockey guy. So it's kind of funny. I thought that was, I thought that was great introduction to the NHL. Oh yeah. Like a naked man walking through the like workout. Well, room. Workout. Like, what? Like in junior, it's like, you don't, if you miss a workout, you're like not playing the next game, you know, like super like, now we're right. at the level where guys just like get paid a lot and like whatever. <laughs> oh my God. That's really funny. I like that. That's good. Have you like now returned the favor of the quirkiness and like pulled that? Yeah. No, I guess in my own way. <laughs> and yes, in my own way, I'm just like the super like intense guy all the time in practice. Like I want to do like battle drills. That's like, I'm always like, want, like, can we do battle drills? Like, like I want to get ready for the game. Everybody's like, no, it's practice. We don't want to do battle drills. Like that's my kind of quirkiness where I'm just like the typical go hard. And like, I get typecasted as that guy. And I don't really care. And guys are just always making fun of me for that. But so it's, I don't really say I'm quirky that way. I just kind of just be myself and people think I'm nuts. I don't know what else to say other than that. They think I'm a little loony. Hey, sometimes there's a benefit in um, leaving people guessing and not knowing who you are all the time. So, well, I kind of just show exactly who I am. That's the thing. Well, that's like they all, even the young guys, like I'm the easiest to chirp on the team. Like we have a young guy, we have 18 year olds here at camp because uh, their seasons aren't going into WHL and they're allowed to come down to the HL. So like this young 18 year old guy is starting to get confident and he's like chirping all of the older guys and it's funny. And he's just kind of like messing with me a little bit. And this other guy from the OHL messes with me and says he's in my head all the time. And I'm just like, can you like, I'm trying to like practice hard here. I'm trying to like set an example. And they're like, okay, Gabe. So they actually, I get chirped probably more than anybody. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Why. I'm like the big tough guy and stuff, but like I'm easy to chirp and like I'm pretty like chill, but we go, right. against the, we go against each other in a drill. They're like, oh, I'm going against Gaber. I want to go against Gaber because they know I go hard. I'm like, oh yeah, like, that's kind of the more chirping I do. I like it. I like it. That's um, unexpected, I think, what, that from from what people would maybe think of you just seeing you on the ice. Maybe so. that's why some people just think I'm like super like witty and stuff. I'm really not. Like if you mic me up, <laughs> if you mic me up on the ice. This is kind of what happens. It's like I'll chirp. I try to have a moral code with chirping. I don't really want to just get gutless to guys for no reason. So like say a defenseman gets the puck and I just go take a run at him and like hit him hard. And the guys get nervous. Like even me, I get nervous when somebody's taking a real legitimate try <laughs> to hit me and say, say they ice the puck and I'll just be like, Got a little, got a little nervous there. Right? Like I just <laughs> stuff, and then they'll like freak out. Guys get so defensive; it's unbelievable. Like I've been doing this a while, so I don't really get offended by anything anymore. So I'll just say something about what's happening in the game. They'll just be like, "You suck at hockey. You shouldn't even be out here." I'm like, "Is that really? That's that's your that's that really like I've come that's on. It? That's just mean. Like it's just not nice." So I'll just say that. But like, people think I say like the smartest things. I'm like, I just say straight up things. Like, you know, the guys are chirping me last uh, two games ago in San Diego your Instagram is so like stupid. Like nobody cares. Like, you know, like all, I'm just like, man, I'm just being myself. And they're just like, I'm like, oh. what do you say to that? I'm just yeah. literally just being myself. So it's like, they kind of like, you sound stupid no matter what you say after that. So they're going to just keep talking. And I'm like, okay, like, I guess you just, you're, you're an angry person. I don't know what to tell you. Like you need to work on yourself. Oh my gosh. You're like, yeah, you thought that was going to work. Good luck. Try again. Yeah. Matthew Kachuk, who's like a notorious chirper and gets under people's skin. And when I played in Jersey, he hung over the boards. There was a scrum going on the ice and I was like leaning over wishing I could be out there. I'm, you know, I'm never really out there when like a couple fights happen at the same time. I usually am trying to keep the peace. And he like leans over and he like looks at me and I've looked at him. I'm like, dude, I've heard everything. Don't even waste your breath. Like, I know I suck. <laughs> I'm the worst player out here. Great. And he just went, and just kind of kept watching and didn't say anything. I was like, that kind of like shows you. I've just, I've heard it all now. Nothing can bother me. Yeah. Like you shut it down. You shut down Kachuk. I love it. <laughs> so then that's why when I say things and guys get all fired up and I'm not even chirping them, they're just mad that I'm out there hitting people. You know, I'm like, you're just, you're just making your all self all look bad. Like you're mm -hmm. just, you're just proving that I'm in your head and I drew two penalties and I'm kind of like, this is what I'm, this is like my management's watching this and I might get called up because you guys are getting overreacted. I'm doing my job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, keep, keep getting all hot and bothered and frustrated. Seriously, I'm like laughing. He's like cross checking me on the back. I fall over and everybody's punching me in the head. I'm laughing with the rep. I'm like <laughs> cross checking. See ya. We scored on the power play. <laughs> you're going to laugh your way back up to the NHL. Like you're just yeah. going to be like, ha ha ha, come on, bring it on. You're just going to do basically until someone's like, until I do something out there, I make a mistake or I go offside or I make a turnover and somebody's right. like, next turnover, I'll be like, yeah, I don't know. It's not good. Like that might be like, oh crap. But like, other than that, 
<laughs> Cut the dumb chirps, man. Like, it's so. So uh, what would be your one piece of advice then for our young players? And let, let's just go with like these 18 year olds who are, who are joining you uh, in the, in the A. Well, one in particular, the one that I was talking about, he's already like, he gets it. He's doing the extra work at practice. He sees me doing like extra conditioning. He comes and does it with me, like all that kind of stuff. That's what I would say is like, um, try to figure out really quick why some guys keep playing and other guys don't like, obviously I'm not in the NHL, but I've had a seven year career now. Like you, you put in the work, you learn things like I'm, I'm telling guys like one thing I've really noticed actually is you know with a system hockey is a lot of instinctual things you go out and just play and you don't want to be thinking but at this level there is systems that you had to have to adhere to and play a certain way you're not going to play coaches can put you out there so it's funny how some guys will come up and just be in junior mode and just trying to make like crazy plays it's like you can't do that It'll end up in the, back of the net so a lot of the times what I do is like I go through mental reps and I do it before every game I go out on the bench and visualize everything and try to go through because things happen so fast you have to be able to just just react and not think same goes to the pk that i'm learning right now i'm just you know i'm going through it all the time what do i do in this situation what do i do in this situation you got to put in the mental side of it it's not like a playbook in the nfl where you got to memorize so much but you got to put the mental reps in to be prepared when you do get the opportunity to go penalty kill i better know it inside out because if i didn't i wouldn't get the next one i wouldn't get the next one and now i'm doing it a lot more Wise words. Thank you for that. <laughs> Who is your favorite hockey hunk? Favorite hockey hunk. Hmm. Uh, and what what makes him a hunk? Let's just, let's clarify that. You could do uh, skills, looks, uh, maybe someone you admire. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Roman Yossi seems to be a very classy, classy yes! individual. He seems like he's got. A, he's a classy individual. He, you know, he's always in like GQ stuff and all that stuff. He looks good in the suit, right? So I'll go with him. And he's, I think he's, I'd probably pick him. I guess him and Hedman, but he's, he's, Yossi's unbelievable. I think he's such a good player. Yes, he is. Explain yourself. He's my all-time favorite player. (laughs) And I have him literally all over my room. I even have this little, uh, like, figurine thing of him. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of an exception, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so who is your favorite hockey lady? Could be a wife or girlfriend, um, player, anybody. Broadcaster. JT Brown's wife, Lexi Brown. She's awesome. I love how uh, she's very fiery on there. She's not afraid to defend her family, defend all these uh, these issues, so go with her. And and, uh, JT's been awesome to get to know a little bit. I didn't get to play with him. I kind of missed him. He came into mini when I went out, but uh, seems like a really cool dude, cool dad. Yeah, she, I love the way she puts like her children on blast and just makes it yeah. like reality. It's it's yeah, real. She, she shared the other day or something like her dad was like, JT was like, eat your chicken or your vegetables. Yes. And she basically just told him to like, shut the F up. And she's like, he had to stop everything in her from being like, yes. She had to be like, no, that was funny. <laughs> that was good. Yes. Go give her, go sauce her a follow. Um, the last question. Do you have a Sidney Crosby story? Um, I actually haven't played against him. I warmed up against him and I was at, I made sure in the warm up to view him as much as I like to sit across the line and see him doing his stick handling and seeing all that stuff, try to take it in. I also haven't played against the Blackhawks. I did that with Kane and Taves just because you're just warming, you're just out there. You're not going to play, you know, you're not playing. So just the time you are out there, just kind of like take a peek over the line, see their gear in person, see how he like, you know, how big he is, you know, Mm -hmm. everything. It's kind of cool to just kind of be that close and, in an NHL setting. So that's pretty much it. Did you take anything from, from Crosby or K? I mean, I already Taze? know everything is to pretty much about him. So he, <laughs> I, yeah, that was just cool to like, see it in person, you know, tell everybody where they can follow you and keep up with you if they aren't already following you on social media. Yeah. I'm at Curtis Gabriel underscore on Instagram and just at Curtis Gabriel on Twitter. Um, that's where I'm doing most of my damage. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.